The majestic Firth of Clyde, situated off the southwest coast of Scotland, has long been the heart of Scotland's economy. A significant part of the Clyde's success is due to its fisheries. Trawling has contributed to a large proportion of the fish caught. It has been a long road to reach the Clyde's current state, with many changes to trawling policy occurring along the way. From 1889 to 1962, the Firth of Clyde was closed to trawlers larger than eight tons in order to protect herring fishing grounds. Then, in 1962, trawling was allowed, so long as it occurred greater than three miles from the coastline. At this time, fish caught increased until 1973, before numbers began to rapidly decline. 1984 saw another change in policy as trawling was allowed within three miles of the shore in order to increase fish landings, but in spite of this, fish caught still continued to decline. By 2001, seasonal prohibitions on demersal fish had been implemented to protect spawning cod, but by late 2000s, the only commercial organisms being caught were lobsters. It got to the point where experts were describing the Firth of Clyde as an ecosystem nearing the end point of overfishing, a time when no species remain that are capable of sustaining commercial catches. Christy Judge and Alex Young are current students at the University of Glasgow. So, demersal fish living on the sea floor are most affected by trawls, which drag across the seabed. Yeah, the trawling aspects not only harm the diversity, also the abundance. How would you quantify a statement like that? Landing data. But to be honest, that wouldn't be sufficient enough to completely understand the situation. Landing data? Yeah. That's the data of the fish that have been caught and brought to shore. So what other data was collected? Well, trawl survey data was collected, abundance of each species was taken, richness and evenness of the fish species was also taken, length and finally fishery data. Alright, so how many years were the data collected for? Well, from 1927 to 2006. Alright, good. Interesting. Interestingly, the results didn't necessarily show what was expected. Understandably, most people were worried about the top six commercially caught species, cod, whiting, haddock, hake, place and saith. However, the numbers of these fish did not seem to be declining. Beneath the surface, though, something more sinister was occurring. Yeah. Okay. From 1920 until 2004, the percentage biomass of whiting steadily in increased until it reached 87%. This proportion dropped to just below 72% as non-commercial fish returned. <laughs> the paper found that there was a significant lag between the stoppage of trawling and the subsequent response in fish stocks. This could be down to the disrupted food chain as many non-commercial predators were depleted, such as the spar dog, a small pelagic shark species. It could have taken a while for the correct balance to return to the population. The paper found that there was a significant lag between the stoppage of trawling and the subsequent response in fish stocks. Onward, please. <laughs> 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 The LMAX indicator is the maximum recorded length of the fish species biomass and as you can see from this graph, when the ban on the trawling was reappealed just after the 1960s, the LMAX indicator dropped from a value of 70 centimetres all the way down to that of a value of less than 50 centimetres and then after the ban again, picked up again. Mm -hmm. Right, let's choose that. Okay. LMAX wasn't the only aspect of the community that was affected by the fishing industry in the Clyde. El mean, the mean length of demersal fish biomass, dropped steeply between 1920 and the early 2000s. And as you can see from this graph, the, in the 1920s, the, mean, the El mean of the community in the Clyde was over 60 centimetres. And as commercial fishing gradually picked up over the years, it dropped as a steady decline all the way down to less than 20 centimetres in the 2000s. El max and El mean in the Clyde were not mirrored in nearby regions such as the Hebrides and the Irish Sea. 
showing that the Clyde was more keenly affected than its other regions. It would have been expected that the decline of fish stocks witnessed here in the Firth of Clyde would be emulated in other areas of deep water, such as the Irish Sea and the Hebrides. The research paper found that this wasn't the case and that the decline of fish stocks witnessed here was much more pronounced than these other areas of deep water. The hypothesis that it put forward to explain this was this strip here, which is a terminal moraine created by uh, the last ice age. The shallow water means that there is very little movement of populations between the two, and because of this low migration rate, the effect of overfishing in the first of Clyde was much more pronounced. 13 years prior to trawling, 13 taxa of domestial fish accounted for 95% of the biomass. But after 40 years of trawls, this number dropped to only 4 species, which accounted for the same percentage. Following stoppage of trawling in the 2000s, this number had doubled to 8, with the additional 4 being non-commercial species. Analysis showed that biomass of the main commercial fish had in fact doubled by the late 2000s compared to the 1960s, disproving the fears that fish stocks had been so dramatically reduced. However, the average length of individual numbers of these species had reduced substantially. For reasons such as this, there will always be controversy about trawling. We attempted to interview someone from Trawling Industries, but they declined to comment. Right, it doesn't work yet, but you can tell. It's like, try to Okay. We'll try.